combination of the properties. So I'm going to be using the power of the power property and a quantity raised to a power. So when I have a quantity inside and they have powers, when I take the power on the outside and give it to everything inside, I need to use the power to the power property. So I'm going to take that exponent on the outside, that 2, and I'm going to give it to the x squared and the y to the 6. And when I do that, I'm going to have the power to the power, which means I have to multiply it to the powers inside. So when I simplify here, I'm going to get x to the 4th, y to the 12th. When you have the combination properties, be very careful not to miss the numerical part. So this numerical part needs to get that power also. So I'm going to end up getting 3 to the second power, x to the fifth, and it's a power to a power. So I end up getting x to the tenth, y squared, and then z to the sixth. And then you need to evaluate the numerical part. So you end up getting 9x to the tenth, y squared, z to the sixth. Pause and try. Should have gotten 27x15, y12. Now I have a combination, multi-step operation of exponents, or properties of exponents. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do those power to the power, or the power to the quantity property. So we have power to a quant quantity, and we have power to the power. So I have to first simplify piece by piece. So I'm going to work with the first quantity. I'm going to take that power on the outside, and I'm going to give it to everything inside. And again, that negative 2 is being raised to the third power. I have a to the third power. And then I have b to the sixth, because it's a power to a power. So I end up 2 times 3, which is 6. And then I'm going to simplify the second piece. And that is a power to a power property. And it's being multiplied to this piece we just simplified. So I'm going to end up having a to the eighth. Now we have the multiplication property. So I'm going to simplify the negative 2 to the third power, which gives me negative 8. But then that multiplication property, when you have like bases being multiplied together, you add their exponents. So I'm going to end up getting a to the 11th here. And then I'm just going to bring down the last piece, b to the 6th. So this is simplified. So be careful in the order in which you do your properties. Pause and try. Do the first piece first. I get d to the 21st, e to the 9th, times, and I do the second piece, and it's 3 squared, which is 9, d to the 10th, e squared. Now I have the multiplication property, where I'm adding exponents for like bases. Remember, the numerical part needs to go up front, so I end up getting 9 d to the 31st, e to the 11th. Similar to a quantity raised to a power, when you have a quotient raised to a power, that power on the outside needs to go to everything inside. So you end up getting something like this, where you have a quotient, x over y, all raised to the fifth power. Well, to simplify, I need to take that power and give it to everything inside. So I end up getting x to the fifth, y to the fifth. Be careful when it's a combination of properties. I have powers inside, and I have the quotient raised to a power. Well, that's going to be the combination of the quotient raised to a power and the power to a power rule. So you're going to take that power on the outside and multiply it to the powers inside. When you do that, you're going to end up with r to the 16th over s to the 10th. Pause and try. When you simplify this, be very careful not to miss that numerical part. a to the fifth, you get a to the fifteenth, because you're multiplying those powers. Now remember, it's three to the third power. Three to the third power is three times three times three, which will give us 27. And then b to the second raised to the third power will give me b to the sixth power. 
now when you have a combination of properties going on inside and it's raised to a power. The easiest way is to simplify inside first. Simplify all that stuff that's inside and then take the power on the outside. So when you're simplifying, again, I like to break something like this into three separate problems. So I'm drawing my line, I simplify the first piece, and two over three will not reduce any further, so I'm just going to write it in my solution area. And then I'm going to look at the next piece, and I see the highest exponents on the bottom, so I'm going to subtract and it's going to stay on the bottom. So I get a squared on the bottom. The next piece, the higher exponents on top, so I'm going to subtract and I'm going to leave it up top. So I get b to the fifth on top. Now that it's simplified, I'm going to take the power on the outside and give it to everything inside. So you're going to end up getting 2 to the third, b to the fifteenth power, 3 to the third, a to the sixth power. And now you're going to have to evaluate the 2 to the third and the 3 to the third and you'll get 8 b to the 15th all over 27 a to the 6th. So simplify inside first before you take the power on the outside. Pause and try. Again, I want to simplify inside first. I'm just drawing my line. I'm looking at the first piece. 5 over 15 will reduce to 1 third and then a7 over a to the fifth will simplify. I'm going to subtract and it's going to stay on top. I get a squared. And then b over b to the fourth, higher exponents on the bottom, I subtract and I leave it on the bottom. Now I'm going to take that power on the outside and give it to everything inside. And remember, we don't need that one because we have the a squared on top. So we're going to end up getting a to the fourth on top, all over 9b to the sixth. Now we have something similar, but it's different because I have a quantity on top raised to a power and a quantity on the bottom raised to a different power. So in this type of problem, I can't simplify first because I have to take those powers on the outside and distribute it or give it to everything inside. So you have to know the difference between the two type of problems. So in this case, the first thing I'm going to do is take the power on the outside and give it to everything inside. So on the top I end up getting x to the third, w to the fifth, and then on the bottom I get x to the fourth, w squared. And now I can simplify. So again, when you simplify, I like writing that line and looking at each piece at a time. The higher exponents on the bottom for the x, I subtract and I leave it on the bottom, so I get x on the bottom. And then the higher exponents on the top for the w, so I subtract and I leave it on the top, so I get w to the 13 all over x. Pause and try. So be careful here because it's 2 to the third power, which gives me 8. And then x to the 15th, y to the third on top. And then I have 4 to the second power, which is 16. And then x to the fourth, y squared. And now I'm going to simplify piece by piece. 8 over 16 will reduce to 1 half. x to the 15th over x to the fourth, higher exponents on top, so I'm going to subtract and leave it on top, so I get x to the 11th, and then y to the third over y squared, higher as exponents on top, I subtract and it's going to stay up top, so I just get y. And remember, I don't need that 1 because I have something left up there, so my answer will be x to the 11th, y, all over 2. Now we're going to deal with negative exponents. And negative exponents mean base is in the wrong position. And when the base is in the wrong position, you need to move it. So you're going to move and you're going to make the exponent positive. So the whole idea of the movement is to make the exponent positive because we don't want negative powers. So if I have a to the negative m power, that means that it needs to go under 
1 in this case because there's nothing left up top. So I end up getting 1 over a to the m power. And I made the power positive when I moved it. So if you have 4 to the negative third power, that really means I have 1 over 4 to the third, or I have a fraction. And I need to simplify that piece, so I get 4 to the third will equal 64. So my solution would be 1 over 64. So be careful, it's not a negative number, it is a negative power, and the negative power means I need to move and make the power positive. So I have x to the negative second power times y. Well, y doesn't have a negative power, therefore my y is not going to move. The only thing that moves is the thing that has the negative power. So in this case, the y is going to stay up top, and then the x to the negative second power will move under the y, and I would get y over x to the positive 2 power, because the whole point of moving is, in, is to make the power positive. Now, when you see something like this, be careful, because the only thing that's moving is the thing with the negative power. So again, 3 and a do not have negative powers. The only thing that will move here is that b to the negative second power. So I end up getting 3a all over b squared. So only the thing with the negative power moves. So if the negative power is in the bottom, you want to move it to the top. And if it is simply on the bottom and you have a 1 on top, you end up just getting the b to the positive m power. In this example here, I have 1 over x to the negative third power. I want the power to be positive. Because the power is negative, it means it's in the wrong position, so that means I'm going to move it. And because it's in the bottom, it's going to move to the top. And because what's on top is 1, I'm going to just end up having x to the third power. Be careful, because if you have a number other than 1 on top, and you have something on the bottom that's a negative power, well, it needs to move, but that 2 will not move, so you end up just getting 2 times x. And you don't have the exponent of 1, so when you moved it up, you had x to the 1 power. Well, you don't need the 1 power, you just write the x. So be careful when we're talking about 1's, negative 1's, that when you move it, the power also is not shown. And this last one, you have to be careful. I have y over 2x to the negative 7th. Now the y doesn't have a negative power, and either does the 2. It's only the thing that has the negative power that moves. So in this case, all I have to do is move that x to the negative 7 up and make it a positive power, but the y and the 2 will stay where it's at. So x to the 7th times y all over 2. And again, you could have put x to the 7th after the y if you chose to. Pause and try. In this case, you see you get 2x to the 6th. Pause and try. In this case, you end up getting 5 over x to the third. Now look at this example. Again, they both have negative powers, and when they have negative powers, it means they're both in the wrong position. So I want to move and make them positive. In this case, they'll flip, and we end up having the positive power. Be careful when you have negatives in a problem that the negative powers mean they're in the wrong position and they need to move. In this case, you see I have 2 times x to the negative fifth power over 3 times x to the negative seventh. The 2 and the 3 do not have negative exponents. Therefore, the 2 and the 3 will not move, but the x powers need to move. So in this case, the 2 and the 3 stay where they're at. I move the x to the seventh up and make it positive. I move the x to the negative fifth to the bottom and make it positive. And when you see like bases, you're going to have to simplify. And this is the 
division property and you have to subtract the exponents. So you end up with your solution here is 2x squared all over 3. So you will have to simplify your answer if it can be simplified further. Pause and try. The x to the third goes up top, the 3 staying on the bottom, and the y to the fifth goes on the bottom. Pause and try. When you switch it up, you end up with y to the fifth over y squared, and this can be simplified to y to the third. So now, when you have a combination property going on, I have a negative power on the outside and I have a quantity inside. Be really careful. I find that it's simpler to take the inside and flip it first and make that outside exponent positive. When you have a negative power, it means that everything inside needs to change. When you do that, I'm not messing anything with the exponents. All I'm doing is I'm taking the bottom and putting it exactly on the top. That x, y to the negative 2 power goes on the top. And then that x to the negative 1, y to the third power goes on the bottom. And notice that I changed the power on the outside to positive. So when you have a quantity and it's raised to a negative power, I find it easier to take the quantity inside and flip it first. Once you flip it, you change the power to positive. Make sure that you take exactly what you see on the bottom and write it on the top and exactly what you see on the top and write it on the bottom. Don't worry about the negative exponents. We will work with that inside after we change that negative power on the outside to positive. Now that I have the outside power positive, now I'm going to simplify inside. So I want to simplify inside. I'm going to take what we have inside and move the things that need to move. So that x on top and then I have an x to the negative 1 on the bottom, that's going to come up top. And then that y to the negative second power will go to the bottom and the y to the third will stay on the bottom because it's positive. And now I'll simplify the x times x, it's the product property. I'm going to add the exponents, I get x squared y squared times y to the third will give me y to the fifth. And now I'll do the quotient raised to a power, and I'm going to take that power and give it to everything inside. So I get x to the tenth over y to the twenty-fifth. Again, I like to first flip the inside and change that negative power outside to positive, and then simplify inside. Pause and try. Flip the inside exactly the way the top is going on the bottom, exactly the way the top was written. The bottom is going on the top exactly the way it was written, and I change that power on the outside to positive. I'm going to simplify inside first. That negative m to the negative power is the only thing that needs to move here. And then when I simplify, I end up getting m to the seventh on top, remember, n to the 0 power is simply 1, and 2 times n. And now I'll take that power on the outside and give it to everything inside. Don't forget to give that power to the number, especially after we did all this work. You don't want to miss the numerical part and that power or the whole problem will be wrong. So you end up getting m to the 14th all over 4m squared.